Before we received the masterfully created videos and movies we see today, the first camera was invented. And no, I don't mean video camera. Beginning in the late 1800s, people began to experiment with photo by blending them together to give the illusion of a motion picture. But since technology was so limited and it was so difficult to capture that sort of video, motion pictures were rare. In the turn of the century, motion photography became groundbreaking. It was accomplished using multiple cameras and compiling the individual pictures into a single motion picture. This is something that you yourself could do today using a few cameras that are set off to go at sequential moments. During this time, production was limited to those who were experimenting and inventing due to the size, portability, and cost of the cameras. Opposed to today where you have large companies, and even the general public with this type of technology at their fingertips. Upon hearing about motion photography, you might be asking yourself, well how did these inventors view the films they created? They used this thing. Pretty antique looking, am I right? This device was called the Paraxinoscope. It was later replaced by the Zoopraxiscope, a device that looks even more ridiculous. Moving on to the early 1890s, Edison Laboratories introduced the public to the Kinetoscope, a camera that used backlit celluloid fluid to project moving images. The only problem with the device is that it had a huge limitation. It could only be viewed by an individual, as an eyepiece and magnifying glass were needed for viewing. Later, the company went on to open the first production studio, the Black Maria. A fun fact about this building is that it was covered in tar paper for the purpose of making film strips for the Kinetoscope. Enough about Thomas Edison, let's talk about Louis and Auguste Lumiere. The two brothers would go on to create an invention known as the Cinematograph. The Cinematograph was a combination of a recorder and a projector. It created films in 35mm format with 16 frames per second. Due to Thomas Edison combining one of his previous inventions, the phonograph, a device that recorded sound, with his kinetoscope, motion pictures with sound were now a possibility. How did this change anything? Well. Audio and video could now be recorded simultaneously through the use of a new type of film that could read and then be used to produce sound. Silent films are replaced with sound films or talkies. Now that we've established the foundation for film with sound, let's examine the transition from film to digital. First of all, film was very expensive. The worst part was that it wasn't even reusable. If your actors messed up on a scene, that piece of film would have to be scrapped. On top of that, film was also difficult to edit. On the contrary, digital shooting is limited only by the hard drive on which it's stored. The way you go about editing digital footage is by importing it within an editing software to create a variety of effects. So yeah, filmmaking got better as the technology did, and basically the only people that made movies were the directors who could afford the $115,000 vid- <coughs> Hold on one second, I, I need to answer my phone. Hello? Uh, hello yes, this is he. What do you mean I forgot to mention cell phones? Ah yes, the invention of the smart device. Beginning in 2010 with the iPhone 4, this device and others like it were capable of recording in 720p. Just a year later, Apple would create the iPhone 4S which could record at a stunning 1080p, a resolution that would go on to become the standard for video everywhere. Nowadays, with every new phone comes the capability of recording 4K video. Alright, that's cool, the public can make videos, but up until 2005, could they really share them with anyone? The answer is no. Before the public was in possession of the tools necessary to record quality videos, the head honchos of modern day social media were born, starting with Facebook in 2004, YouTube in 2005, Twitter in 2006, and finally Instagram in 2010. Since the beginning of YouTube, creators have been able to freely share their videos of any length with anyone that has an internet connection. Facebook takes second for the video length limit, coming in at 45 minutes. Below Facebook is Twitter, whose video limit is 140 seconds. Finally, we get to Instagram, which currently only offers non-verified users one minute of video at a time. With these advancements in mind, companies began fueling the social media entertainment craze by creating mobile 
editing apps, as well as professional equipment such as tripods and camera stabilizers for the sole purpose of recording videos with a smartphone. Such opportunities and equipment have allowed YouTubers to obtain a following and tell their stories that otherwise would have been impossible to tell without permission from Hollywood and the use of professional equipment. One such YouTuber, Jesse Ridgway, better known as McJuggernuggets, gained his following by posting fake freakout videos to YouTube. These videos were perceived as his real life. As a result, they garnered a lot of attention, and his channel subscriber count skyrocketed from 500,000 to 3 million. By the time the follow-ups to his first video rolled around, he had a full-fledged story fleshed out with a definite end. As of October 12, 2017, Jesse has accumulated 3.5 million subscribers and 1.4 billion views overall, and has a documentary on his critically acclaimed Psycho series. If it hadn't have been for advances in the audiovisual world, ideas like the Psycho series never would have seen the light of day. Yes, phones and digital SLRs and compatible film equipment fall short of the capabilities of professional cameras, rigs, and editing software. But at the rate they're advancing, smartphones are on the way to becoming an acceptable form of entertainment. In this video, we've examined the birth of film, including the first cameras and viewing devices, the transition to video, and the creation of platforms with video sharing capabilities, and finally, the age of smartphones. So when you're recording videos on your smartphone or watching the next crazy new advancement in the audiovisual world unfold, think about everything it took to get there and where it all started.